Alright everybody, this is Eternal Blade here and welcome back to Concept Creation Section 3. Today we're going to be working on the countertop. So we're just going to zip through this right here. Um, the modeling portion is just pretty easy. We have our, we're just making some three cracks in the wood. You make three long incisions in your wood, uh, chamfer the edges and just kind of pull them back. And we're just looping it around so we can get uh, some better flow with polygons. And sort of rough it up a little bit and give it a, you know, some edges and um, things like that. Now go ahead and UVW map it. Uh, pretty easy, just get your top, separate that, your bottom, separate that, and separate out your sides, and you can just unfold them, and then allocate them to the most available space possible, and rotate them in the direction you want, and render out your UVW template. So now going into Photoshop, uh, we're going to start off here by just picking a color from the image, and creating our color palette by choosing lighter and darker uh, hues of the same color here. I'm just going to clean it up a bit, and then we're going to apply a mid-tone brown to the entire uh, canvas here. And then we're going to take one of our darker browns and we're going to start to go ahead and paint uh, just some pretty thick cracks in here. Now I realize in hindsight that these cracks are actually way too big, so make sure you make yours a little thinner. I didn't think about the length of the actual countertop when I was doing this, um, which I learned the hard way. So you'll see me sort of correct my mistakes here. Um, and then get your second lightest color and go in on one side only of the cracks and just go ahead and highlight them. Uh, that way you get um, a sense that the light is coming from one direction. You can kind of sort of get some depth into uh, the cracks as you do this. And again, try to make sure you cover the entire uh, wood piece in cracks. It looks kind of strange if you have one spot that is not covered and I did have that happen to me and it required some effort to fix it later on. Uh, so just make sure you get good crack coverage and make sure your cracks are not too thick. So once I've finished highlighting everything here, I'm going to go ahead with a moderately light color and a soft, larger brush and just go in and kind of paint between all of my cracks to give uh, some variation to the wood color. You don't want it to all look the same. Okay, now I'm picking a slightly lighter color and just going in on some of the larger areas and sort of shading it in to again uh, provide some of that variation. Uh, next what I'm going to do is go ahead here with the lightest color you have, and I have seven colors there, this is the lightest of the seven, and choose some uh, very hot highlights. So wherever you have kind of large swooshes or, or features that stand out, you can add <clears throat> a little bit of this hot highlight just to sort of bring out the image a bit. Okay, uh, now I'm just trying to change the background color just a bit to see if I can make it look more like the reference image. And I'm going in here with a large soft dark brush and just adding some shadows in uh, just kind of randomly throughout the picture uh, so that we can make it look a bit more realistic and go ahead with the light color around the edges to sort of give it that um, vignette look and erase all them, erase all the edges that um, need to uh, be sh shown through. Going ahead here, created a simple V-Ray diffuse material and applied this as the um, diffuse map just to test it out and I figured out that uh, I need a lot more cracks because they're too big. So I'm now going in with a smaller brush and a, black or a dark brown color and adding some more cracks in. And here what I'm doing is to sort of bring the cracks out a bit is I'm creating a simple bump map, just a black and white image, and I'm applying it to the bump channel of my VR material <clears throat> and doing some test renders right here, sort of adjusting my bump settings. I think I ended up using 30 for my bump map settings. Um, <clears throat> following along with this, I'm coloring in the cracks, uh, the, the actual large ones I sculpted just so they turn out a little bit darker from the shadows. And now I'm going ahead and just cleaning up all of those uh, cracks I created earlier. As I said before, they're a bit too big, so they're sort of way too cartoony, not even stylized at this point. I'm just going ahead and I'm sort of trimming all the cracks down and making it look a bit more realistic. And you'll see it takes quite a while. Uh, this video is actually sped up 1,600%, so this took me probably about two hours uh, to do the entire painting. Now, admittedly, it was a learning process. I'm not the best texture artist, um, but you know, as I've watched a few videos myself, I've gotten a little bit better. You can see how far I've progressed since I painted the wood uh, legs there. Um, right now, I'm just going ahead and adding a, a wood grain filter and putting it on a different layer and sort of overlaying it just so we can get that wood grain feel and shaping my cracks again. Uh, but So at some point I'll probably have to redo the wood legs to conform to this same sort of style. 
Uh, now taking one of my lighter brushes, lighter colors, I'm going over all the small cracks that I created and giving them the same highlight treatment that I did the larger ones. Uh, this is again so they just pop out. Um, and it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, you just have your dark cracks and then you have your moderately light highlights and then your white hot spots almost. Um, I went in and desaturated my uh, texture a bit just so it looked a bit more realistic, sort of like weathered wood instead of really uh, colorful, playful uh, wood. So just going in here and continuing with my highlights. Um, and then I think I skipped a day here now and came back to it. I uh, had something come up, whatever it was, I don't remember. Uh, so we're just going here, kind of running our way through. And as I zoom out, you can see it sort of coming together now. And it's got a really nice feel to it. And I'm actually fairly happy with it at this point. I'm just got to clean up these last few little edges, and that'll be sort of what I want. So I'm just going here on the final stretch, and we're going to give it a quick render here. And this is pretty much what I want. Uh, I have this little open space right here, which I talked about earlier, that I needed to fill up. And now I'm going to go ahead and render out my final bump map here. And then I just want to copy my entire top image. I'm making another group and just sort of copying it and flipping it to the uh, bottom side. You won't really see it, but just in case. I'm going here on all the side pieces and adding the same sort of dark uh, wood texture. And again, I'm rendering out a bump map just because I forgot that the first time around. And I'm adding my highlights to that as well. That way we get the same consistent feel uh, throughout the entirety of the um, piece here. Okay, going ahead and trying one last time. And I just need to increase and make sure that the wood grain goes all the way through the texture. So I apply the darks first, apply my lights, and then I am ready to go. All right, so here's our final render. Uh, it actually turned out pretty good. Um, I've gotten a little bit better at painting wood since I tried to make these ones over here. And that's just a different style of making wood that we tried over there. But uh, this one's a pretty awesome hand painted texture, I must say. Um, you know, we can see we got pretty much all the detail in the sides of the wood, the top of the wood, all the wood grains, the shadows, the highlights. Um, and in the render, you, know, you can see even how the light reflects off certain things. And we might edit the materials a little bit later on. But for now, that just the bump map and the diffuse map is working pretty good. And uh, we'll probably use this same texture for a couple of these other countertops, just kind of flip around and do some things with it. Uh, because it takes a, you know, about a, I don't know what that was, about two hours to paint the one texture. So I just want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video.